It's on the apron. Welcome. If you're just coming in. Boof a la ficelle. Welcome, welcome. We're gonna hang out for like, you know, five, ten minutes and then get rocking and rolling. I realize, I realize people got shit going on. Welcome, welcome. Hopefully I got my shields up. There we go. If you're just coming in, we're going to make an Anthony Bourdain dish. I'm gonna tweak with the settings a little bit, get a better view for you. Actually, one second. Please let me know how the music sounds. Let me know how the visuals look. I want it to be a little more intimate, get you, get you see everything. <sighs> mm -hmm. I'd say that looks okay. Coming away with how you think the setup is, how my brows look. I think that looks pretty good. Let's don the apron after I sweep up slightly. I'm gonna get rocking and rolling in five minutes. T minus five minutes. Nice simple dish. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Wash up. Something rather different today. Something really different. Sorry, I couldn't see comments. It, it was informing me to watch what I comment. I'm glad you like the music. Visuals are adorable, awesome. Yeah, give it a little chill vibe. Welcome in moniker, welcome in my laugh. My laugh, my laugh is adorable. Nice little French towel. We're gonna hang out, I'd assume this whole process is gonna take about an hour, hour and a half. Um, a much more like intimate kind of vibe going on. I didn't mean that too intimate, but it's it's more personal. Actually, what's the best way I should fold this? Please comment away. I'm glad you like the music. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Get rigged up. This is for moniker. Get started in, you know, two minutes now. We'll get rocking and rolling. Hope you're doing well on this Monday. My Mondays are always a little stressful, but that's why we cook. Just adjusting here. Camera angle. 
Thank you for joining. Let me know if the music is too loud. Show my knife skills. I'm going to, whether I like it or not, in this uh, video. Making sure. Those four packs are so awesome. Yeah, I like these. Uh, the little four packs are convenient, especially when you like to cook. Um, you know, you can crack one open, deglaze whatever you want to deglaze, and then get moving on. We can sharpen the knife because, you know, that's what people do. And we are going to get moving now. So, if you're new, this is something completely different. This is a live stream. I'm usually just rocking and rolling, doing Anthony Bourdain's layout cookbook right here. I'm doing every recipe in Anthony Bourdain's layout cookbook. And in order to catch up on my videos releasing every Monday, I had a lot of personal stuff and I couldn't really drop a video this Monday. I couldn't edit, up, edit a video. So I'm going to make a video live. I'm going to make a recipe live and we're going to see how it goes. And you know, this is when I would welcome to you my, you know, welcome you to my kitchen and all that stuff. But today we're going to rock out with buff a la ficelle. Quite literally meaning beef on a string. It is a ten that we're going to simmer for about 15, 20 minutes. Hopefully not overcook it. Cook it down with some potatoes, cook it down with some vegetables and slice it up. And I am going to make the addition of roasting potatoes. I have some Yukon Goldie Boys. I heard they're ideal. They're lower in starch or higher in starch. Regardless, they're what you want for oven roasted potatoes. So, you know, I have the ingredients here, but I haven't really, I've reviewed the recipe slightly and it comes across as pretty simple. Let me give you a little intro here. One page, really nice, nothing crazy. And we have about what, seven, eight ingredients, two paragraphs. That's something I like. So let's get moving first. I want to, real quick, is the music okay? I'm trying to take tabs on the audio levels. For me, it's blasting, but if you can hear me, if you can hear the music ambiancing, awesome. Take a little moment to look at comments. Keith, thank you for the comment. M laugh. Fire away, ask some questions. Yes, please. We begin. Whipping out our beef, right? To maintain a level of sanitation, I always like to go with some plastic wrap here. Just to keep our table nice and clean. And this way I don't have to clean it on camera. It's beautiful. And I'm gonna show you off. Eh, for now, I won't show you the beef. I'm just gonna lay it in front of me like this. Two pounds of a filet roast. It's been sitting out for about half an hour. And what I'm going to do to hopefully, what I do with all my meat actually, take that how you want, is I season it first, let it rest for about 15, 20 minutes. Ideally, the salt penetrates the meat, draws out some moisture, and uh, you're left with a tender -er cut. Let's whip this out. I got white gloves because everyone's got these black gloves. Everyone's got these black t-shirts. Let's do something different. Take some moment. Let's read the comment. Tanner, I'm making, it's a French dish, bouffe à la ficelle. It's literally buff beef on a string. We're going to slow simmer this. I haven't opened this up yet. I got this from my homie Keegan, the butcher, the man. We got some nice blood going on here. Hemoglobin, myoglobin, whatever you want to call it. Ah. Try to display that for you. I am kind of enamored by that. Uh, 
Grab some paper towels. Just want to dab it down and then show you. Taking some moments to read comments. MLF, I'm glad it sounds good. Victor, grazie. Mm -hmm. So here we have our meat. Two pounds. Boof. Just want to maintain some sanitation. There we have it. Center cut. It's tender as fudge. I don't want to curse on here. Looks good to me. I'm going to salt this rather thoroughly, and I'm grateful that Keegan, ha that Keegan has seasoned this, I mean, uh, tied this up for me, because I could do that on camera, but I don't know how it would look. I don't know how great it would be. We're gonna season pretty heavily before we get rocking and rolling with anything else. About two inches above. Just rock it around. Ideally, this is going to season within as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the one time I will accept those words on the stream, my friend. I curse myself, but YouTube doesn't like when I curse. So you guys are more than welcome. Okay. And I do believe it's hard to go over, especially when you're using kosher salt. Gonna grab a plate. And there we have it. Tied up. Keegan did a freaking bang up job. Apparently I turned British when I'm talking about meat. Bang up job on the meat, Keegan. Salted, as you can see, it's kind of already drawing out a little moisture. Gonna let that rest off to our side while we tidy up a little bit. If you're just coming in, welcome in. We're making buff a la ficelle. My accent is terrible, in part because I'm American and I'm trying to learn Italian at the same time. French ain't too happy about that. And you know, I'll just cover it in the background. Beef resting up. Tidy up. Seasoning up. Next, we're going to move on to the roasted spadados. I'm going to hit the oven first at 425. I already have a, whatchamacallit, a roasting pan in here. So I'm bringing up the oven. The dishwasher says hello. I'm bringing up the oven to 425. And with that, I have a roasting pan in there already. You may have noticed when you throw like a roasting pan in the oven, it does this and you pull it out and it's all bent, it's all warped. It's because the roasting pan gets shocked by the sudden heat of the oven. So I like to bring up the oven with the roasting pan and then also you get a nice caramelization after adding the vegetables. Let's take a moment to read the comments. And there is some mundane tasks going on here. You know, I'm going to just peel some potatoes. Let me read. Keys to perfect dinner night. Perfect dinner night, something simple, something easy, something uh, you don't have to think too hard about. Pasta, I always love. A little bit of wine, you know. Commercials, shouldn't have that. I'm gonna have to look into that and laugh. But let's move on to Spadados, two pounds. Two pounds of Yukon Gold Potatoes. Okay. Get a little peeler. Just go after the weird bits right there. There's a funky bit. And I'm actually going to bring the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. And I can also read the comments a little easier. I'm recording with my phone, so it, uh, there we go. It ain't the best. Oh my gosh, Napoli or Rome? I haven't been to either one, so it's uh, up for debate. I can't say one is better than the other. Just working on 
some pieces here. Just looking for some nasty bits. I like a little skin on my roast potatoes. There, you can see nothing too crazy. Maybe like a burnt end going on there. Get that off. Let's read some comments. Onion cheesecake, yeah. Yep. Wes, I'm glad you approve of my meat handling. Kind of going with the flow and keeping things sanitary as we're moving. And you know what? At the end of the day, all this stuff is going to get cooked. So is it that big of a deal? I don't know. I've seen a lot of people in a lot of kitchens not practice proper sanitary measures. And uh, I'm still here. And I've eaten shit that I've seen them mess around with because I'm that hungry. I've seen a man grab a whole steak raw and then with that same steak, assemble my burger. So I'm just cutting our Yukon Golds, looking for nothing crazy, you know? Probably like little inch by inch boys. Go a little more chunky on them. It's super satisfying to hear that, for me anyway. If you're just coming in, welcome in. We're making a beef dinner, a whole freaking beef steak, John. Should be good. Should be chill. We have our oven coming up to temperature. We have our potatoes getting sliced into nice hunks. And you know, I'm an amateur. There's no getting around it. I'm a guy who does not cook professionally. I got into it because I love food and it kind of calms me down a little bit. There we are. There we are. Going for the kind of like half inch slices. Pow. Let's check out some commenties. Yeah, just Yukon Golds. Nothing crazy. <laughs> Oh, I saw that comment, the uh, blade scraping. You know, that's something I am still working on. I got these at ShopRite. Right, you can use that side of your blade. You won't dull it up as much. There we have it. Thank you for that comment, actually. I often scrape with that side of the blade and that ain't good. Okay. Potatoes over here. Now what you can do is soak the potatoes. However, I'm not gonna soak them. We're moving and grooving. I'm gonna get them all into a bowl. Okay. Might be a little too much. We're gonna find out. See that? There we are. Don't you worry, I'm gonna salt these spuds. Now, just tidying up. <laughs> tidying up in the background. Nothing crazy here. I feel like time would it be, ooh. I feel like time would be a nice addition. Honestly, you just pull it off like this. Pull it off. I had these just sitting around in my house. And honestly, this is a little tedious, so I might opt for the dries. And something I am always curious about is, should you 
add onion, I mean, should you add oil before adding your herbs and your spices and your salt? What do you think? Let me freaking know. So I'd say we're working with about like teaspoon of thyme here. Get out these little boys. Time it up, time it up. Someone said yes, so yeah, let's go in with our oil right now. I got some avocado oil. Toss it up. Looking at probably a tablespoon. Salt before the oil, you say? A little too late for that moniker, but I thank you for the advice. Paprika, looking at probably like a tablespoon. Nah, you know what? Let's do that much, yeah? A little garlic powder. I don't know how much exactly. Just what I feel, just what looks good. Now. Salo. Salt, salt, salt. Probably like a tablespoon. No, nah, you know what? This is more like two tablespoons. Give it a toss. Yeah, I want a little more time because why not? This is actually like, it was gonna go to waste otherwise. <laughs> Just coming in, we are making some potatoes to go with our buff a la ficelle. A la ficelle just means beef on a string, which is what my butcher did for me, thankfully. And I'm gonna get a little black pepper in here as well as I go to look for that. Mise en place, yes. You wanna talk about mise en place, my friend? Tim, there is nothing more mise-en-y than freaking prepping while you're like gonna go live on YouTube. In general, you know? And it's like a cool little experience too. It smells really nice. The thyme, I did have some rosemary, but I don't think I'm gonna chop that up. Thyme, garlic, paprika always adds like a kind of nice background note. I'm gonna put you back in front. Yeah. Sorry about that. Here we are. One more before I can read comment. Check it out, check it out. Roasted spuds, a little paprika, thyme, parsley. If you got a way to prepare potatoes, let me know. There's no right, wrong way to prepare food. Except, you know, in a manner that'll hurt someone. This is live, this is live. I'm gonna bring out our roasting pan. Pipe and hot at 425, that's what I want to see. I'm getting a little hungry, and it's not even time to eat. And I'm satisfied with that because our pan is not covered. There's still some room, right? The pan is not clustered up. I'm gonna get this in the oven, start a timer for about 40, 45 minutes because in that time we're gonna cook our beef and all our other things. <laughs> Whew. That always hits me hard in the face. Let's take a moment to read some comments while I'm cleaning up. Sacrilege. See, it's still, the comments are killing me, folks. Sorry. Nice sizzle, yes, nice sizzle indeed. So, what do we have next on our menu? Oh, 
I have honestly like a little guide on how to rock and roll with this. Yo. So next up, we gotta make our vegetables. We have to cut up an onion. We gotta prepare a bouquet garni. Guess what? I already did that. I like to prep these ahead of time. A little leek, a little bay leaf, a little parsley, thyme, all ready to go. But let's chop up some more vegetables. Get this out of my face. Get this out of my face. If you're just coming in, I'm happy you're seeing my face. We are making Anthony Bourdain's Beau Fale Ficelle. It is a French dish. It is something I've never made before, but damn it, we're gonna try. So let's get moving. Slicing up some carates. He calls for six baby carrots, but these are all I have. I have big carrots. And we're gonna chop these up. And I'm going to rapidly show off my skills when I am trying to race against our potatoes. And I'm gonna cut these in actually kind of like a rustic method. Um, I learned just, you know, through the power of YouTube, an amazing way to cut vegetables that allows them to cook evenly, but also look really sexy. Ooh, you know what? Pro tip, pro tip. Always have like a sort of waste bin. I'm going to use the same thing we had our potatoes tossing up in, and I'm just gonna throw our potato scraps in there. In all honesty, I'm brilliant. Thank you. I'm, I would disagree, but I'm just trying to learn as I go. See, vegetable scraps in there. Whoa, what a cool little, hey there. From, welcome in, welcome in. Hopefully you can see everything very nicely. Victor, grazie, grazie mille. Thank you very much for that. Peeling up some carrots. You didn't have to do that, Victor, my shield. Bourdain calls for, what do you call, eight baby carrots, but I'm actually going to rock out with probably like four or five big ones. Carrots aren't just for bunnies. They're great for flavoring stock and then removing them immediately after because no one actually likes carrots, except when they're seasoning things. Yeah, yeah, rock out with one more. I'm not gonna make a complete mess. Reading. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Italian American, but I'm not very that Italian. That was good grammar. I'm uh, learning as I go. Now help me out here because we gotta peel up some turnips. I don't know how to peel freaking turnips, you know? Help me out, help me out, help me out. Italy, yes. Vivo Italia, vivere vivi. There's 19 different ways to say one verb in Italian. It's very difficult. Pre-recorded, yeah, this is so pre-recorded. Help me out, help me out. Someone comment how to go about turnips. We have to peel these turnips. I'm just gonna take my time here, and I don't want to cut myself, right? Probably should have peeled these ahead of time, but I'm probably just going to do six. Ooh, kind of satisfying the way these are peeling. I actually got a trick. Check it out. Welcome to the stream. If you're just coming into the stream, cool little trick you can do while peeling potatoes, anything, and in the process, avoid peeling your fingy. You stick it with a fork. And this provides you a nice surface to peel, right? Safe from getting jacked up with your finger. Gonna roll through these. We're making Anthony Bourdain's beef a la ficelle. It is beef, roasted up with some vegetables. We got our carrots going, we got our turmeric. Turnips. We got our turnips peeling up. And we're trying to be safe here. I wish I could uh, 
talk a little more. Hello there, Billy Kelly. Hopefully I responded. I feel like, uh, Christine Robinson, someone help out Christine. What are we making? I'm sorry, I've said it like 19 times. Christine, I'm very happy to have you. Oh, I'm very happy to have you, however. Dude. Pierce the turnip with the fork. So these have an interesting smell to them. They're kind of like, um, I don't know. Pretty strong smelling. Victor, thank you for taking out the trash, sending the clowns back to the circus. We're going to continue to move through this and try to read some comments as I'm peeling our turnips. The whole process itself, I'd say, is probably going to take an hour, really, once that meat gets in the pot of our vegetables, it ain't gonna take too long. Pierced with the fork, aggressively sniffing, smells nice. I don't know what that means, but thank you for coming in. I'll try to read some comments as I go. Oh, let me, I'm sorry. You're not really seeing what I'm doing. Let me change the camera for you. What'd we say here, Christine Robinson? Sorry about that. I'll read your comment shortly. You're gonna get a point of view. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, thank you. I'm currently setting a timer for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. We got our carrots peeled up and we're going about peeling our turnips. This little fork trick, just something nice to speed up the process. And I am learning, you know, I really should have peeled these things earlier. I'm sorry, I'm trying my best here. What the heck is going on here? Space lizards? It is too early for space lizards, my friends. Too freaking early. So something interesting with these, I think they do oxidize. So we might have to put them in a little. Mr. Kitty, thanks for the comment. I usually don't peel apples. I usually just eat them whole because the skin is quite good for you. Um, usually, the only time I'll peel them, peeling up our turnips, just vibing out. Never had a turnip, I ain't gonna lie. And we are live doing our thing. I have a fear of scrapers because, I'll show you. I really jacked up my finger one time. I don't know if you can see. There's a pretty nice scar right there. Tidy up. We got three more turnips to peel. This is kind of what I enjoy about cooking. You just take your time as you go. Um, ideally, you don't have a full live audience, but when you're in the flow, it's very hard to cut, like get out of it. Before filming, I had to like run around the house like crazy because the Wi-Fi was disconnected and I had to reset the router and then I had to freaking run back downstairs, sweep up real quick, and then we were good. Yeah, I realize it's glitchy. Unfortunately, um, I'm streaming mobile, so I'm using my phone. And with that, you're going to have some ups and downs. <laughs> Let's check out some comments. Rutabagas. Huh. I never heard of rutabagas before. This is indeed a double-sided peeler. Um, I don't know what that means. It just kind of looks ambidextrous to me. There you have it. Just want a nice, pretty, nice little turnip. One more, one more people. One more turnip. 
Mm-hmm. Ooh, yes. Like a little, uh... There we go. Eight turnips later, we figured out how to peel. Carbonara game. Mmm. I don't know, man. Nick, that's a tough question, because a lot of freaking, uh... <laughs> That's a contentious point in Italy. Some people say, I mean, most people say you don't use any, all but like three ingredients. But it depends. There we have it. Turnips peeled up. Gonna tidy up real quick off camera. Gotta clean our cutting board. Real quick comment, please show the toaster. Perché? It's just a toaster oven. I'll bring it over there. Make the people happy. Hey there, Kathy. Welcome in. There's a toaster. She's cute, ain't she? But nothing is more cute than our freaking beef tenderloin. Two pounds. Nick, your girlfriend's from Trieste. That's pretty awesome. Does she speak Italian? Talk to me. I'm very curious. If so, tell her I said hola. Just kidding, I said ciao. I'm learning my best with the Italian. Okay, now let me reveal our bouquet garni. What is this? Very simply, if I can figure out how I wrapped it. Sometimes I wrap things like a surgeon. And with that, I can't remember how much Bourdain wants us to do. Let me double check here. Let me double check, check in the recipe. Hold on with me. Hang out with me. So, look at that. This is kind of a, what we got going on so far, if you can see. Look at that little turnip. Carrots peeled, turnips peeled, leeks. We need the white part only washed and cut in half lengthwise. Let's get those. Uh, I think I have them in the fridge, one second. Un momento. Ah, uh, here we are. Here we are. Gonna bring you back over with me. Welcome back. Good to have you. Eba, thank you. Welcome from... Uh... Yeah. Video does freeze. I'm sorry about that. Some of these things I just, I can't control, unfortunately. Let me get the video in better position for you. So we have our leeks. They start off like this. I sliced off the bottom portion and we're left with the white part, which is more tender. However, there's a lot of dirt in there. I hope you can see quite a lot of dirt. So what we're gonna do is one, slice it, Straight down the middle, right? Straight down the middle. Do our other one. Get a little bowl of water. Off camera, off camera. And I'm going to first remove that first section. That first layer gets Nice and dirty. I don't know if you can see that. Nice and dirty. Remove our first section of all of these leeks. I hate it because we're kind of wasting, but not terribly. And then I like to just get them in the water and fan them out. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Jesus is king. Amen, brother. I'm not necessarily religious, but hey, hell yeah, you know? Whatever floats your boat. Fanning our leeks. 
through water because they're dirty. They're sitting in dirt. That's how they grow. I know, kind of a new thing I've learned, but it's true. Gordon Ramsay, not even close, my friend, but thank you for the comment. This is actually a good time to read some comments. All right. Okay. Leaks have been rinsed. Hopefully you can see our water is kind of dirty-ish. Now, where are we? Bourdain doesn't say what exactly to do with our um, vegetables once they're peeled. I don't really want to put whole weird kind of funky looking vegetables, but if that's the rustic vibe he's going for, so be it. Cheers, little teeny tiny Sutter home. Sutter stead. And I do have some little tweaks coming up that I think are going to be contentious and you know, there's going to be some keyboard, keyboard warriors coming out of the woodworks, but that's what I want. Which chef inspires you? Richie, great question. I'm not too mainstream with the chefs, um, but one thing I admire is the ones that are low key and just knock out really good work. Um, while I'm talking, I'm just gonna knock off these little nibs here. But um, I think it's just like a thankless job when you know you really get into it. Cause you're, you're providing for people. You're doing something that is dirty behind the scenes. There's a lot of bullshit that goes on. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really kind of like a, a noble job, in my opinion. Just slicing off these root ends. And then I'm going to give a taste test on one of these. Thank you for the comment. Thank you for the comment. If you ask a normal question, if you act like a human, I'll probably read it and respond. Forza. <laughs> Oh, very cool, very cool. Is that from your girlfriend, Nicholas? I think Forza is so cool. Per Forza, per Forza. It means kind of for power, just do it, just... My one friend in Italy who's like teaching me, she says like, per Forza. It's just like, fuck it, try it, do it. Stacy, Katie, thank you for the subscribe. Now go unsubscribe so you can do it again and then I can call you out again and thank you. So we're meesing up, right? Meesing up. I'm gonna cut our turnips in half because I feel like it. I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna be a good idea because we have our vegetables, but ideally they're all going to cook at the same time. So when they are all cooking at the same time, actually, are they cooking at the same time? Let's read. Ooh, they're not. It's okay. I already cut them. I already cut these bad boys. I'm gonna go for the similar size. They're baby turnips. Good question. Good question, Falcon Lips. <laughs> and better name. These are baby turnips. Um, that's what the recipe calls for, and that is what I'm making. Just slice them up. Working with what little space I got. Now, a cool little method to cut carrots. There's a particular name. There's a particular uh, name for this way of cutting, but you're gonna kind of cut on an angle. You're gonna cut down, twist it, cut down again, twist it, cut down again. Hello, hello, hello. First. We're going to go in at an angle, right? Twist, go in at an angle. Twist, go in at an angle. Twist, go in at an angle. And what we're left with are these oblong yet somehow symmetrical cut carrots. And we're gonna go through all of these in that same method. If you'd like, I could bring the camera closer. Let me know. Yeah, someone knows, someone knows. It's a little hazardous, but honestly, if it's not, why are you cooking in the first place? There we have it. If anyone knows the method I'm cutting these, let me know. I don't know uh, what these are called. The method we're, we're cutting these bad boys. Just getting off the tips and going in at a nice angle. Rolling towards ourselves as we make a slice 
every time. There we have it. I'm walking you. I'm walking you through the entire process, the entire Anthony Bourdain recipe. If I cut myself, it's gonna be live. If I go to the hospital, it might be live. I don't know. But this is a first for me, and I'm glad you are here. Looks nice, nice cut. Please provide any feedback, give any comments you have. Do you like carrots? I know a lot of people don't. Rolling towards me and slicing. All right, people. So we have our prep done for the most part. Carrots, turnips, leek leaves. Everything's been washed. Everything's been cut in a rather uniform pattern. See? You could tell he keeps a sharp knife. I try to keep a sharp knife because, you know, if I do cut myself, I wanted the doctor to have an easy job stitching it up. I don't want to give him a hard time. Let's see what we got moving on. Get our vegetables over to the side. Tidy up a little bit. Bouquet garni over to the side. And then soon, Soon my contentious culinary perspective is coming. It's coming, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we've covered the vegetables with water and add the bouquet garni. Add salt and pepper. I'm gonna hold off on the salt because I salted our beef, right? Bring you over there. And in the process, I can read some commentees. <laughs> Check it out. Pewaha Couture, thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. You're the man, you're the man. Hey, Stizzy, you don't really wish you I was me. You were me. Cause uh Don't forget the sofrito. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Tell you what, this is kind of already sofrito, right? You got your uh, turnips, you got your leek, you got your carrots, and you got your, um, well, those are your leeks, and you got your flavoring. So, what do we do with all this? Dump it in here. It all goes in there. We're gonna fill this up with some water. Filtered water. This is French cooking, damn it. This is simple, this is homey, this is like the stuff that Shit, man. Nations were like developed on. I'm gonna need some more water, but I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and actually wait to add our bouquet garni until we get this up to a boil. Let me grab real quick another. Uh... Yo, shoot. I don't know where the water, we're all out of filtered water. Dun, 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 dun. Falcon lips, I hear you, but that is one thing that's out of my control. I wish I could have the full range, you know, but unfortunately, it just ain't in the cards right now. One day, one day. in the background here tightening up don't mind me let's see how much water we got there we go that's more than enough I'd say so we're gonna bring that up to a boil but in the meantime I would like to show you how our beef looks. Just tie it in up here. Check out some comments while that is coming up. 
Oh, so you, under, you understand the struggle here, Falcon Lips. I see. But you still came at me. You still made fun. No, I'm just kidding. Putting down plaster because I want to keep it clean. Keep it clean, man. I don't want to have to scrub this table down. Let me get some gloves on. Pow. You can see it's even gotten a different color to it now, right? It's a little darker. Um, ideally what has happened, that meat, we gave it enough time to soak in, okay? So now I'm just gonna give it a pat down. Pow. dry. It's going to go in nicely. Really beautiful color on there. Now I'm going to go away. Throw my gloves in the tr trash. And ideally, we're going to be rocking out with all, whatchamacallit, um, our mise, ready to go, ready to rock. So, what do we have here? We got our meat. We got our bouquet garni. This is the beauty of cooking. You got all your ducks in a row and now everything just gets applied to heat. If you're just coming in, thank you for joining me. I'm making bouffe a la ficelle. Quite literally, beef on a string. Let me get you over here for me. So yeah, we got our potatoes cooking up. They're looking nice. Let me show you what they look like. They got some time. They got some serious time, but they're coming along. We're getting a nice exterior. I didn't rinse them. I didn't parboil them with a little baking soda to increase the acclimate. I just throw them in here. You know, people were, People were roasting potatoes long before Alton Brown, and they turned out just fine. In the meantime, I think what we can do, I can show you like a little, so what we're gonna do is strain this mixture. Um, once the beef has cooked, we're going to reduce it. And Bourdain just says reduce it. The only problem with that is there's no like thickening agents. So what I'm going to make is a beurre manier, I believe. The pronunciation was probably terrible. A burn manier is just equal parts butter and flour incorporated to the end of a stock a soup and it can thicken it up. So right here, I have exactly that. Let me show you. Equal parts, flour. What do we do? We're gonna mix it together and make it almost putty sort of out of it. Uh, let me grab a bowl. Victor might recognize this if you're still in here. If not, it's quite all right. Equal parts, butter, flour. Let's grab ourselves a spoon. Did I tie it? Yeah, I did tie the, uh, whatchamacallit, the bouquet garni. Yep, I tied it. So this is actually pretty cool. It does turn into a paste of sorts. It's just another solid French technique. I know it's a little messy, but it will come together. And the butter itself could be a little softer. Do, 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 do. Mm. do I support emos? Yeah, hell yeah. I support anything that doesn't hurt anybody. If you do you and you're not hurting anyone, perfect. 
if you're being in a, if you're hurting someone, uh, not a fan. So we're incorporating our butter and our flour together. And this is making a paste called Beurre It is a French thickening agent. You can add it to the end of soups, you can add it to the end of stocks, and it adds a really nice body that is otherwise hard to achieve, unless you make a roux or something like that. It's coming along. Almost there. Hope your Monday is chill. What time are we looking? Yeah, it's eight o'clock. So yeah, this will wrap up around 8.30. Probably got about 30 more minutes. And our Burr Manier has almost been nicely puttyfied and incorporated. You can add just a little bit of this stuff to a boiling stock to, you know, oh, that's our potatoes. I'm gonna start a timer again for about 20 minutes. Cause they got time, they got time to go. They need some time. Okay. Mix, mix, mix. Now you can see it's nice and puttified. It's nice and together. It's nice and incorporated, right? And there you have it. Beurre Uh, You know, it's freaking butter paste with flour. We're gonna use that to thicken up our sauce at the end here. Put this off to the side. Tidy up a little bit. That doesn't look too great, huh? I did not read that book, um, La MC. I heard it's kind of like invasive. I heard it's kind of, uh, let me, sorry. Yeah, I heard that book's like kind of invasive. I wasn't too crazy about it. Um, maybe one day, I don't have a desire to read it. It's kind of like everyone knew what he was going through at the end of the day. Like we all kind of got a general idea. And yeah, let's read some comments. We got our stock coming up to boil. Everything's in its place. Of course, I might have jinxed our asses. Bourdain does recommend that we are going to prep up some nice cornichons on the side, some nice horseradish on the side, and some nice, what else? Dijon mustard. Dude, I love Dijon mustard. I love it. Rule one, be kind to others. Two, don't curse. Three, yeah, those are good, good, good tips. Favorite cheese, blue cheese, hands down. Blue cheese, good lord. Although I've been having like some stomach issues, some intestinal issues, and uh, like blue cheese has been kind of off the radar, along with a few other things. Feta, however, feta will, feta will get you done, and it won't mess up your stomach as much. <laughs> this is a great time to read comments. We got our stock boiling away. We got our whole ass tenderloin thoroughly seasoned. <laughs> that Nathan, what a great, what a great question, Nathan. Guess what, Nathan? That's gonna be the to the poll of the day. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Personally. I think it is not, but let's see what the people think. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Great question. It's a great question. As you can see, let's come over to our John over here. Lisu, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tony Hawk, I like the spirit. I like the spirit a lot. Okay, here we have it. There we have it, people. Not quite at a boil yet. Once we hit a boil, we're going to add our beef. Now, remember that point of contention? Remember that point? We're gonna add some of this to it. 
we're gonna add some better than bouillon beef base to our mixture. I'm only gonna add about a tablespoon. This stuff is magical, man. It is so good. I'm gonna get a spoon, cause kind of important. And I'm not gonna add a lot because it's very salty. We already salted our beef just to impart a nice beefy flavor. I'm gonna add that much. And again, I patted down our beef because uh, there was some excess salt in there. That is not really going to add much of a salty flavor. If anything, that's just gonna add more body, more depth to it. Get rid of this. Tidy up a little bit. Yo, if you're just coming in, chilling out, making bouffe a la ficelle, literally beef on a string, from Anthony Bourdain's Leal Cookbook. I got a new fridge. My uncle bought a new fridge. Plop that bad boy in there. Let's throw our beef into the stock. It's gonna take 20 minutes to cook, ideally getting a medium rare temperature. Thank you, Tony Hawks. Let's get this in here. 20 minutes. Start the clock. Start the clock, people. 20 minutes. We're gonna throw our bouquet garni in there as well. It's gonna impart all those nice herbal flavors. It's doing its thing. It's looking really nice. Looking really nice. Brian May, that's my dad, he's in here. Brian May, everyone, pogs, thumbs up, chats for Brian May. I am his spawn. Okay, we got everything coming together. Now, bring you over here. The Robin steal a show every episode. So Bourdain's gonna have us gather our um, Little cute accoutrement. I don't know if I said that right. Get ourselves. This is family style, you know? Get ourselves cornichons, which I freaking love cornichons. They're, if you haven't had them yet, they're a really nice uh, pickle. Sweet, sometimes they can be a little salty. They're uh, French, I believe. Hopefully uh, I'm not too, hopefully the angle's okay. Trying my best here. I just wanna dump this whole thing in there, but I'm not gonna. Take a moment to read some commenties. Glad I could provide the poll on the day. Keep it up, Mitch. Glad I stumbled on your channel. Nathan, I'm glad you stumbled as well. I was going to do a poll, Italian or French food, but I don't want to get shot. Um, yeah. Personally, I don't know. It's a close one. It's a close one. Got our cornichons. Dijon Moutard. Is that what it said? No, Grey Poupon. Grey Poupon. I could eat this stuff with a spoon, and I have. Do a dollop. This is kind of like a French, like a family style, little dish -a -roo. Delicious. Check out some comments. Dude, thank you, girl, dad, cooking up. I'm glad you uh, subscribed. This is just a taste, um, literally. It is uh, usually a little more, you know, I make videos. They're more edited, they're more precise, they're more concise, they're more, um, there's a little more production to them. 
but this is live, you know, like, I mess up, it's live. I got hot stuff in my face. It's like a little red. It's live. That's what, that's what I like about this. Now we need to get that eyelash out of my eye. Ugh. And Bourdain calls for some rock salt. This is not rock salt. This is floor to sell. Right? This is really nice. Thank you for the subs. If you're just subbing in, floor to sell. This is how you would serve it. Okay. So we got our beef cooking down. Ideally, we're trying to achieve a temperature of medium rare. Bourdain says it's going to take about 20 minutes to do that. I'm just rotating the pan. We got our sides dished up, cornichons, Dijon moutard, a little salo. How do you make your own fleur de sel? Falcon lips. Explain yourself. How do you make your own fleur de sel? Because this stuff I may or may not have stolen from a steakhouse I used to work at. Get these off. Tidying up in the background. If you're just coming in, we're going to learn how to make our own fleur de sel. There's a vid. Man, that was such a cop out fa Falcon Lips. I thought you would just say, oh, throw it in a wine bottle and wait two days. We're looking at about 10 more minutes on our beef. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Garlic powder, paprika, get this away. Let me show you how our steak is looking. Just cooking away, there it is. Dun, dun. Okay, you have to dissolve and recrystal, huh. That's interesting. It's damn interesting. In the name of getting this evenly cooked, I'm just gonna rotate it. Get everything nice and happy. You can tell it just looks good, honestly. You can you can see things are happening there. Gonna get this out of the way. Let's read some commenties. This is lo-fi playing in the background. Shay, just found your channel. Yeah, oh, you wait, Shay, you wait. We're just getting started here. Thank you, Bruce, thank you. We're doing our thing. My favorite song just came on. We got that cooking away. got everything prepped for the most part. Um, 10 minutes to go on our beef. Our potatoes, we're looking at about five minutes um, from there. We're gonna serve it up kind of family style, ideally. <laughs> Victor just, I saw a Victor comment. Ideally, this is, you know, there's a lot of meat, okay? I don't know, maybe some people come over, maybe some people don't. Regardless, there's gonna be a lot to go around. Okay. Carne asada marinated some flank steak. Gosh dang. You sir are lucky. You have some lucky people around you. Let's give a peek at our potatoes. Ooh. There we have them. Gonna flip them. Welcome in if you're just coming in. We got our potatoes. Be careful because this John's hot, right? This is hot, okay? I'm gonna get a spatula, give him a flip. Where's my spatula? So much for my mise to the place. 
Let's try and get in there with a rubber spat. Okay, there's some freedom. I got some freedom. Just get them tossed around. Four fifty, you know, you'd think these would roast up a little quicker, but that's why I made them. That's why I got them going in the beginning. Let's get this back in the oven. Okay. And then we're gonna have some fun, do a little French sauce. I have to say, one thing I learned, um, let me get you there. One thing I learned making these French dishes is how to make a bang, banging sauce. You can almost always make a good sauce finishing with some butter, finishing with, well, starting with a roux. Oh my gosh, the French and their sauces. Don't get me started, they're so good, they're so freaking good. Real quick, if anyone knows the temperature, the internal temperature of a tenderloin at medium rare, comment away. The internal temperature of a tenderloin, comment away what we're trying to look for because that's what I am going for. Bourdain says 20 minutes, but everyone's kitchen is different. Everyone's pot is different. However, the boiling point of water is always the same. Maybe depending on your sea level, not certain. Hey there, Austin. Don't scare me like that. Don't you scare me like that, Austin. Cooking away, cooking away, cooking away. Leeks are cooking up nicely. Carrots and turnips. They need some time, obviously. Meatloaf and mashed potatoes for dinner. John Betty, I'm doing well. Bruce, awesome. Yeah, we're work we're working through this thing. I'm probably gonna chop that boy up. If you can see, this is what we're working on, right? And now, 125 to 130. Yeah. All right, I like that 130. That seems good. 130 seems solid. <laughs> Chicken and broccoli for supper. Karan, hello there. How you doing? Welcome in. <laughs> Just came in and can't get out fast enough. CB, I don't know what that means. I think that's a good thing. Happy to have you. I appreciate that. We're prepping up here, tidying up our space. Knife. That's the thing. Um, like when I'm really moving and grooving, I don't wash everything with soap, especially when you're working with vegetables. Um, and, you know, spoiler, chefs don't do that. I've seen chefs not wash vegetables and bowls that they just tossed up a quick little uh, marinade in. They'll just rinse that out. You don't really need to go crazy. Um, if you're working with meat, yeah, you better wash that crap out. My fear is always that I could possibly kill somebody. Um, but at the end of the day, we got here, we got where we are today long before any of this hand sanitizer and stuff. That being said, I still use hand sanitizer every freaking day. Why? Because I'm a hypochondriac. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jacob Hertz, Jacob Burks, someone tell my, my homie what we're making today, what we're making tonight. So after this, we're gonna strain and reserve our vegetables. This dude is nerve wracking. Ah. I'm curious, what are you, uh, what are your nerves racked about? Please let me know. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna need a platter to take out our beef. Of 
cornichons are so nice. They're sweet, they're tangy, crunchy. Mm. Let's check our... Yo, we just finished eating leftovers from Buff Bourguignon. Awesome, thank you for um, saying what's going on here. Um, let's check the temperature. Mm -hmm. Check it out. I'm gonna pull it out just to see what we're working with. 130 is for medium rare. Pretty nice. Let's get it in there. This is live. You are seeing what I am doing usually behind the scenes and then editing it for your <laughs> pleasure. I'd say we're cooked, boys and girls. I'd say we're cooked. There's some blood in there. Uh, you know what? So we have two options. We can either cook this according to Bourdain's instructions. Or we'll pull it out according to what our thermometer says. I say we cook it. Eh. CB hates live BS, but you are still here. Tell me, you don't have to stay here. This ain't no airport. You don't need to announce your departure. You can leave, come and go as you please. 140. So we're gonna let that, uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, I don't know, it's the way it goes. Like, I've learned to kind of, with the yin and the yang, like, getting popular-ish, you're gonna have a lot of trolls out there, you're gonna have a lot of people that suck, but no publicity is bad publicity, as they say. So, we're actually gonna pull our beef. I'd say, no, I'm tempted, man, I don't know what to do. We're gonna probably do, we can either let it sit, at which we're looking at a temperature of, huh, interesting. We're cooking this more. We're cooking this a little more. We're gonna cook it for five minutes. Get it back in our pot. There. There we go. Let it hang out there. So, what do we got? A conversation going on about soccer. I used to be a big soccer player. No longer. Sebastian, welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in. We're gonna chop up some parsley. Just makes a nice garnish. I love parsley. I could put it on anything. I could eat it. It's interesting, there's a lot of salads that incorporate parsley by itself as the main salad, as the main romaine, as the main romaine. It's done. I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's give it two more minutes, okay? Two more minutes. In the meantime, we're going to do the mundane task of picking some parsley. Of parsley. Of parsley. Quiero un poco. I don't know if that's... I don't know what language that is. Picking up some parsley. Welcome if you're just coming in. Parsley and thyme do go with everything. I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. Something that kind of helped me out with uh, cooking is work, well, life. Working in threes. If you got a task, if you need something that needs to get done, think about three steps. For me, it's helpful. Um, I found, you know, it also establishes a beginning, a middle, and the end. Right now, we're waiting on our beef to cook. We're then going to pull it out and let it rest. And then we're going to strain our vegetables. So that is where we stand. Yeah, you're right, MLF. That's a good call. But you know what I heard though? It keeps cooking. Um, food that has a high moisture content continues cooking. At Esempio, for example, um, like uh, zucchini. Um, what else? I think carrots, things that are um, high in moisture, but I'm now gonna pull it out. And 
And the reason I'm pulling it out and kind of satisfied with this is that touch right there springs back a little bit. That feels like a medium rare to me. So we're going to allow this to rest. I hear you. We're gonna allow this to rest. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna tackle our sauce we're working with. You gotta let the meat rest, man. You gotta let those juices reincorporate. You gotta let those muscles, those proteins relax back down again. What does Bourdain have us do here? So, we took out the meat. We're gonna let that rest for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, bring boiling liquid down to a gentle simmer and carefully skim off any foam or scum with the ladle. As you command, Captain. Hello there, Urgent Paw. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, I turn off the heat. We honestly have a lot of liquid here. Um, a little too much, in my opinion. So I'm gonna grab a bowl and remove some of it. Checking on my potatoes in the background here. Start a timer for 10 minutes on the potatoes. If someone could help me out, start a timer for 15 minutes to let our beef rest. I only have two timers. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. So just straining out some of our liquid. Now Bourdain said there would be scum. I don't see any scum at all. You can just see we have some flavor there. That's like nice and stock-like, isn't it? Welcome in. I just read someone asked what I'm making. We're making bouffe à la ficelle. It is a literally beef on a string. Ooh, I got a little hot stock on me. Okay. Looks good to me. That's enough to reduce, I'd say. And just in case, I am gonna reserve some liquid off to the side in case we wanna use that later. From this point, we're going to strain our veg. Let me get you over here. Kari, thank you. Thank you for that timer. Please let me know when 15 minutes is up. Please let me know when 15 minutes is up. That is when we can slice into our beef. Now, we're going to strain our vegetables and we're going to make a nice sauce out of it. Pot. Gosh, that was wet. This is not a part of Bourdain's recipe. This is something I just felt, right? He would actually have us take out the, veg take out the vegetables and then just reduce that mixture. We're going to instead take out that vegetables, take out those vegetables and reduce that mixture with a little burm manier and um, the little beef stock that I added. So ideally there's gonna be more of a, more of a touch, more of a beefy gravy-like vibe to it. Sebastian, thank you. I appreciate that. Swordsman, what is the secret? What's going on, um, going on? Nurse, I'm glad you're watching. I'm really glad you think the vibes are chill here. Um, that's usually what happens when I get to the bottom of the little bottle. Let's flip this over. Strainer. Our stock, I guess you could call it a stock that was cooking with our beef. Nice, like, rustic, rustic cooking. These vegetables we're going to save. I'm gonna get our broth over to the pot, to the uh, stovetop. Medium heat, gonna let that simmer down. 
In the meantime, I'm going to hand select our vegetables for plating. And give them a taste test as well. I didn't add salt because our beef was salted. Our um, better than bouillon is salty. Our bouquet garni has served its purpose. We got some nice leek leaves. They're all tender. I think we did a good job uh, cooking everything at the same time. Got our broccoli, I mean our carrots. Just separating everything out here. It's hot, it's hot. Potatoes are cooking down. Our beef is resting. My hand is still up like this. I don't know why, let's put it down. What kind of comments do we have? Uh, sort of like a Blancat. Um, I don't know. I made a Blancat to vote. Um, I wouldn't say it's bang on like that because there's no uh, cream. There's no cream at all added to this. It's all just kind of a clear stock. However, if I was good enough, I would make a Blancat. I would, you could make it a cream sauce immediately if you know what you're doing. Just fishing for our pretty vegetables. They're nice and al dente. They're not mushy. I'm squeezing them with the tongs and they're not crushing. Let me know how the angle is, if the food is covering, if the comments are covering the food. That's not good. And you know, if this turns out good enough, who knows, maybe we just stream Bourdain recipes as opposed to making um, videos. You could do both. But this is something kind of off the cuff and something that is very fun for me. Gosh, Mitch, get the hand down. I'm always like, I'm ready to go. And what I like is, you know, we took the care to prep these vegetables. We, cook, we took the care to buy the ingredients and it all pays off in the end, ideally if you follow the directions. Hot, hot stuff. Hot stuff. Let's check out some comments. No cap Kyle. I didn't, I learned uh, on the internet how to cook. Um, I started a year ago doing Anthony Bourdain's layout cookbook and you could argue, I still don't know how to cook. I just know how to follow a recipe. Um, I've been learning how to do a little fun things. For example, earlier today, I whipped up some roasted peppers. Well, I cleaned out some peppers. I made some quinoa not with water. I boiled it with the stock first, seasoned up the quinoa, and then I added some lardon to a pan with some water to render that fat out and crisped up the bacon a little bit. And then I added, I removed the bacon. I added some mushrooms to that um, fond I had. I added a little tomato paste, stirred that up, sauteed that down, and then deglazed with a little acid, a little apple cider vinegar. And um, then I mixed everything together, the quinoa, the mushrooms, the bacon, and it's delicious. I have them right here. Um, it came out pretty good. Stuffed peps, a uh, little more on the vegetarian side. And also I was looking for foods that have a little less short chain um, carbohydrates or triglyceride, I can't remember. Long story short, certain foods make your stomach go, ow, these will not. Let's check out some comments. Yeah, they're pretty good. They weren't bad. Um, I was surprised. I'm learning to kind of create, to season throughout the process, to add salt in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, and then maybe even add some savory notes. For example, with those peppers, um, first off, you throw bacon in anything, it's gonna taste good, but I added some mushrooms, natural source of MSG, tomato paste, natural source of MSG. I was gonna add onions. Those are gonna make my stomach hurt. I don't know, they might or may not. I've been dealing with some annoying stomach pangs and pains. Okay, I have now separated our carrots. Carrots, turnips, leeks, all good to go. 
Can we combine on a cooking segment? Girl Dad Cooking Up, contact me. Girl Dad Cooking Up, send me an email. My email is found on my um, info page. That's nice. It's very nice, light, light flavor, not too salty. Mm-hmm. Try a turnip. Never had a steaming hot turnip. I feel like, I don't know. Hmm. That's nice as well. Like a mild carrot, really. Like a mild carrot. Okay, so this over here. Who set a timer for the beef? Who set a timer? How much time does that need to stay resting? Because I want to slice into that really bad. I'm going to wash my hands. Julia. Sorry. Let's wash our hands now. Welcome in. If you're just coming in, we are making a French dish from Anthony Bourdain. Beauf à la ficelle, beef on a string. I'm going to grab our potatoes out of the oven. We're starting to get that color I want. Hopefully you can see. Nice and crunchy, nice and crispy. They're getting there. They're going to be done right when our freaking uh, beef is ready. I think. And while I'm plating everything, if I don't, if I forget, God forbid, if I forget about the potatoes, please remind me, spam, potatoes, potato, potatoes. Julia Child, that is Julia Child. Five more minutes, thank you. We're gonna put it over here. Just gonna pick out our pretty leeks. Let's read the comments. I don't have kids. Potato, is potato in here? Victor is potato, is uh... I know we had um, potato in here at one point. There's a guy that joins this stream and he just spams the potato emoji. Very funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's chop up some parsley. As our potatoes are coming, uh, they're mixing away. I mean, our stock is simmering down. I'll give you a view on that. Soon enough. Julia is just waiting there. She's right down there to my left. She's hungry. I'm gonna have to feed her soon. This is nice, like solid, like home cooking. It's not too frivolous. It's not too much craziness going on. Rolling up our parsley into a relatively nice log and just slicing away. Ooh, almost cut myself. Dog. No. Dog, Julia Child. That's a cat. Oh, you guys are talking amongst each other. I don't have good knife skills. I'm trying to read comments and chop at the same time. I know people like cry if I, you know, scrape the blade, but if I'm scraping the blade like this, it's not going to dull the blade. Hello there, Mark. Welcome in. We're 
chopping up parsley. I promise it gets, I promise it gets a little more exciting. Looks good to me. I love parsley. It just adds a nice little top note to everything. Adds a nice little color. It's very nice. Okay. So, let me bring you over to our stock saucy mixture. Football guy, welcome in. Welcome the hell in here. So, this is what we're left with. Austin is keeping the memory of potato, of potato alive. So here we have it. As you can see, pretty, pretty soupy, right? Pretty soupy. Pretty soupy. So we're gonna incorporate that bun, berm, whatever I said. We're gonna incorporate just about that much. Whisk away. This will thicken up as we whisk. And whisking actually does cool down as well. Let's take a peek. Should be a little thicker. I hope you see that. I hope you can visualize this. Gonna add a little more. Whisk away. Yeah, you know, I'm curious about the whole rolling boil thing. But I really, I do want to reduce this to uh, the moon. I want it to get like a sauce. Let's see what we're looking at. Oh yeah. More like a velouté now, I'd say. Show you there. Velute, velute, I don't know how you say it. Getting thicker. We are going to, in fact, reduce this down to a simmer. Timer's up, thank you. Timer is up. Okay. Jordan wants that me. <laughs> oh shit. Jordan wants that meat cut ASAP. I do too. Let me give this a taste. Ooh, it's nice. Pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. I'm going to add, mm, I don't have any. If I had some of that like uh, kitchen bouquet or whatever. How do you see me here? Y'all just know potato, y'all just know the word potato makes me laugh now. That is a problem. Just some simple stock, simple uh, saucy mixture. It needs more salt, it needs more, more oomph, a little more oomph to it. So I'm actually gonna add a little more, um, Better than bouillon, stock based, not sponsored. Let's use the other side of our, eh. We'll use the other side of our John here. And that will add some color as well. At this point, I'm gonna add a little more of our burr meunier. Whisk away. Let's give a peek at it. 
Marco Pierre White, hell yeah. Not even close, my friend, but I appreciate that. So, we're coming close to our presentation. Whisking does cool things down. Whisking does really make those like thickeners nice and happy. As you can see, don't mind that. As we were working earlier, it's got a much more viscous mixture to it. Oh yeah, the bouillon. Better than bouillon. And tell you what, I'm adding all this in there. I noticed the bouillon isn't uh, dissolving, but whatever. Gonna bring this up to a boil and then simmer it. Yes, that's what I wanna see. Come on over here, let's look at our meat. Let's look at our meat, huh? Take that how you want. Get our parsley off to the side. Sharp ass knife, very sharp knife. Hmm, you know what? I think if we were to cut Quiet on set, quiet on set. This is the moment we were waiting for the whole time. Let's check on our potatoes. Sorry, I know. <laughs> quiet on set. And he freaking goes away and check, checks on the potatoes. Woo! Yeah, nice color to him. Looking pretty nice, like <laughs> like an airplane just coming through. Don't mind the, don't mind that. So, like I said, Keegan, my butcher, wrapped this up for me. I did not such thing. Now we slice. Bourdain says into half inch slices. Good call, whoever uh, told me to pull it out. I appreciate that. Nice cook to it. Thank you for whoever told me, that looks really nice. Okay, so let's plate this up, shall we? I'm gonna have to take a picture. So uh, in the meantime, we're gonna have to get a little dramatic here. A little dramatic. This is actually kind of neat. You get to see exactly. Yeah, it's a poached beef dish. You got it. Poached beef. And you're gonna see exactly 
what happens by the behind the scenes when I plate this up. I gotta pull this light out. I gotta bring the light all the way off camera. I'm struggling with two tripods, a light, and two cat. Well, just one cat right now. Just one cat. Let me bring our light down, yeah? Very moody. You know, you missed, you may have missed, you know, the cooking part, but now is the sexiest part. Now is the part that I wait for every time I make these dishes, plating it up. So, to begin. Let's give our sauce a whisk. Behind the scenes here, whisking up our sauce. Sorry about that. I'll show you what I'm doing here. <laughs> so, behind the scenes, I'm just straining our sauce because I noticed that better than bouillon did not get nice and um, it didn't, it didn't mix very well. Gonna add just a touch of wonder flour to thicken things up. Beautiful. And now we're gonna plate. Carrots. Nothing obscene. Two or three. Three or four. Get our turnips. Nice and posh. Two or three, like I said. Pow. Get our leeks. Just kind of gathering it up. It looks not the sexiest. Beef. Woo. Just coming in, you're witnessing the best part. It's soupy, but that's the goal. That is the goal, my friends. Nice and neutral. Nice and clean. You would serve this up with that. And this. And there you have it. Got that. And this is Anthony Bourdain's Bouffe à la Ficelle. Poached beef with some broth. Everything got poached together. He would have you serve it up with a little bit of salt. Um, eat it with cornichons. Pig in with some people. Yeah, I agree. I agree it's mild um, for the dish. I really do. So let's dive in here. Real quick, 
Real quick, if you're okay with waiting for two minutes, I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a picture um, just for the thumbnail and we'll get moving here. I'm gonna try it out and tell you what I think. So I should probably get my camera. You can see me take a picture. All right, this is how I do it. You were seeing behind the scenes how I take, how I produce these videos. Except with a little more flair, with a little more uh, fun. Look, come over here. This is exactly what's going on. I got the nice angle. Maybe we can get some stock over our vegetables. Just a nice clear, it is like kind of like a velouté, a velouté. I don't know how to say it exactly. And we'll snag some picks. Lighting is everything, I can tell you right now. Lighting and uh, <laughs> a paper towel. A paper towel to dab up the blood, dab up the juice. And I'll be right back with you after I snag some pictures here. And you know, if this is good enough, I'll do more. I'll do more live streams. It's, it can be difficult at times because, you know, people, the food world can be so pretentious. Like, ooh, I feel my brain rotting as he does this. You know what? That's the process of learning. You got to put yourself out there. You don't have to film yourself in front of 90 people, but you got to just try it. And if it doesn't come out okay, order Domino's. It really is a pleasure doing this. And, um, you know, to represent Bourdain, to sort of show anyone can cook. It's pretty magical, pretty magical. And with that being said, let's give this a taste. Let me put you over. Let me rearrange our lights. It's stark in here. Victor, I'm sure, is taking on the fort right now. What do we got going on? Whoa. Victor, thank you for the dollar for the hot dog. If you're not ready to rot your brain, you're not ready for Flavortown. Yes, sir. I agree. I agree. 100%. And I'm gonna quickly show you another presentation um, that you could do kind of family style for people. Not before, oh shit, giving a taste test. I almost just lost everything. I almost just lost everything. Boom, ba -da boom, boom. I'm gonna check out some comments once I get this, get this here. We got a lot of Germans in here, huh? Think so, Austin. I'm glad you like how it looks. Let's dive in. I realize it's 9 p.m. on a Monday. If you're here, thank you. We're gonna try this. Buff a la ficelle, literally beef on a string. It's just a tender piece of meat, poached basically. And I made a kind of like velouté sauce on the fly. Mm -hmm. It's tender as shit. Super tender. It's just like a nice kind of warm dish. Reminds me of almost like a beef Almost like a beef, um, 
soup, <laughs> but not really. And then of course you can eat it with these sides, get a little bit of everything. I have to say it is cooked perfect. Whoever freaking uh, commented to take it out, you're the bomb. You are the bomb. Get a little bit of everything. Perfect bite, in a sense. Oh. Un momento. Perfect bite. Leek, potato. No, leek, carrots. I didn't show the potatoes. Mmm. Wow. It's kick ass. It's kick ass. There you have it. Really, uh, I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that bad boy. Falcon lips, thank you. I'm glad, um, yeah, right? <laughs> Did the potatoes vanish into thin air? No. Let me show you those potatoes, huh? There we have them. Yeah, trying to scoop them all up. Oh, we'll give it a taste. Nice and crusty, nice and caramelized. Super well seasoned. I love paprika. Whenever you add it to, whenever you add it to beef, I mean, um, potatoes and stuff, adds a really nice like undernote to it. And then. Um, Real quick, I will show you. Real quick, take a vote. Do you want me to wrap things up or I can show you family style how I would present this? Comment away, please, per favore. Thank you for the, thank you for the uh, tips. Would you like me to see a fam, would you like to see a family style presentation? The potatoes are creamy, ma'am. That could have been bad. Mmm. Woo! Very nice. We're gonna wrap things up. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Those potatoes smack. I have all the, I have everything to do here linked in the description. Father's coming on in, and we are going to wrap up, give this little check mark. Oh, that looks delightful. I have a little bit. I'm gonna grab him a Sharpie and... Still yeah. Oh, I don't think... Here, let me, let me wrap this up. The potatoes look amazing. Yeah, everything came out pretty good. So this was, yeah, you can try that. Let me wrap up here before you do um. Yeah, this is all for you. There's so much meat. There's so much accoutrements and stuff. Thank you for spending your time with me. <laughs> yep, hello. Mr. May is in the building. My father over there, he's about to feed the cats. And let me give you the final exit. Look at those, slippers. So. Gosh, sorry, man. Peace out. Thank you. This was, you know, this is where I do the thing. This was back to Bourdain, damn it. Buff a la ficelle. Knocked out. <laughs>